Welcome back to the Pixelist Podcast, my friends, the podcast about all the nerdy things we love and enjoy. As always, we're your hosts. That's Blake. I'm Will, and today we're here to talk a little critical role, a little box mock, and a blast to the past, episode 114 of Campaign 3. But before we get there, you guys know the drill. I think I just forever altered Blake. It's Blake's perception of me because apparently you didn't realize that I can't whistle, which I just revealed to you moments ago. I, yes, he finally had the courage to tell this to me. Yeah. Um, we were just making some small talk before Will hit record, and I was doing a little whistling, a little whistle here and there. And then Will was like, oh, I wish I could whistle. And I was like, I do. Weird. I was like, weird joke, man. No. Weird joke. It's kind of like when you're hanging out with someone and they make like a comment and you're kind of like, Oh, that was weird. Um, that's pretty much what just happened. Uh, but you were not joking. Is what no, you... man, I've never been able to. And like, it's not like I've sat down and had like a, you know, montage training session of trying to learn. But, you know, there's been times where you sit there for like 10 minutes and like, you just, I can never get it. And it's annoying. It's just one of those. Um, this is a really weird, like, it's my own experience that probably nobody else has, but I like vividly remember when I was younger, there were three things I couldn't do that I really wanted to learn. Snapping. Everyone will be happy to know. I figured that one out. Blowing uh, a bubble. I will what? say your snapping game. I don't know about, I didn't, I don't know. I don't know about that one. That one mean? didn't. Well, you just, your snap was a little weak. Your snap game. Just it's through the weak. mic. It's through. Trust me. I, right. I, I, I okay. can, okay. I can go hard with the snaps. But it was snapping, <laughs> blowing a bubble with bubble gum, which I can also do, and whistling. <laughs> Listen, I was like six years old when I had this. I this love, wasn't like last week. <laughs> yeah, I love the confidence, the surety of two guys in their late thirties <laughs> with <laughs> blowing a bubble, blowing a bubble and bubble gum, which I can do, yeah, by the way. Just letting everybody just, know. Yeah. <laughs> but and then, and then whistling, and I you know 30 years later have not been able to figure that one out still which i'm like trying not to fall into like victim blaming mode but i'm just like I, part of me is like have you tried like i have i mean i don't know i don't know how people just learn it naturally like i never no one taught me whatever whatever you know whatever preschool you're sent to where all the little kids learn how to whistle <laughs> i was sick that day and i'm very like i'm a very like musical guy too like i love to just mm. like run around and snap and like just say weird yeah. words and stuff so like Imagine if I could whistle, man. It would just, it changed my whole life. I just don't know how to, I don't know what to say. Like part of me is like, <laughs> as a good friend, wanting to be like, hey man, it's cool. We all have our giftings. But then the other part of me is like in disbelief of, <clears throat> this is a, this is a big lore drop no. for the Pixelist. I know. Maybe that's really like my 2025 goal is like, take a course or something, figure it out. Maybe Only it's too life. late though. Like maybe, maybe it's like, no. you know. <laughs> You know, like you got to learn us like, like it's easier to learn languages, you know, when you're a kid, like maybe I'm past my whistling prime. Or you just gotta, I mean, you just gotta just put your lips together a certain way. I don't want to yeah. oversimplify it. It's, yeah. it's weird. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Can't do it. You know, we all, we all have our faults. So when he, <laughs> we got a little distracted, but that moment literally happened right before we pressed record. So, um, yeah, some deep lore there, but, as always, we are, we, well, not as always, we usually talk about coffee for whatever reason, but we both actually have some, which is not always. I'm gonna give you a little virtual cheers here. I'm on, well, I'm on you, my second, second cup. cup. Second cup today. It's You're a second cup. You're not even cup. a two cup guy normally. I'm not, I'm not. It's a Big two day? cup. Yeah, it's a two cup day. I have uh, meetings all afternoon. And for people who don't live here in NWA, um, it's not unlike the best example I can think of is like Dallas Fort Worth area where you have like all these different like towns that are all, you know, spitting distance of each other. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing with Northwest Arkansas. But so I have some meetings this afternoon, but to get there, it's like 45 minutes away. Um, and so like pretty much my whole day is going to be down there uh, or up there. Um, so I need that. I need that caffeine lifeblood. That extra to, pep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I get it. So I get it anyway. I was trying to look at my phone to see um, if that World's Beyond episode. Oh, did oh yeah. Drop. Did it come out? Has not. Wow. Has not come I wonder what's going on. Which only bums me out because I'm like, man, I was kind of hoping I could tune into it for, for my drive. drive. Yeah. yeah, here in about an hour. Um, but anyway. Maybe it'll come out in the interim. Yeah. Yeah, Rocco. Which just a 
heads up for you guys, we do have a bit of a hard cutoff time today, but we're, we're not thinking that will affect this episode since there was yeah. primarily combat, but just a little heads up that this one may need to be slightly cut short. Um, and in the interest of that, we won't dilly dally too long. I li- I had something I wanted to tell you and it left my brain in that sentence I just said. So, yeah, okay. I'm pausing for a moment to see if I can grasp it again. Oh, well, Is this it? wasn't it, but I just remembered something else I wanted to tell you right before you, when you left to go get your coffee, I was just looking at my phone and there's a collision of worlds happening because Matt Mercer just tweeted uh, that he, he was like promoting a podcast he just went on, I guess. And it was Brian Kibler's podcast and Ben Brode was also there and they're talking about uh, Magic the Gathering. So I was like, what a collision of worlds this is. <laughs> Man, Brian Kibler is like a deep latent memory because I haven't even thought of him in years. Right. Uh, definitely one of my all time favorite Hearthstone streamers. Though. Yeah, I loved his Hearthstone streams. And then for our listeners, if you don't know, Ben Brode uh, was the game director for Hearthstone for several years before leaving and starting a uh, second second lunch second dinner second or breakfast. something like that okay. something yeah. like that yeah. <laughs> whatever the frodo thing is yeah um and uh they have marvel snap which mm. is a really popular um uh card game mobile card game so yeah it's uh, that's cool though commander at home that's that like game system yes right? bro commander by the way like this is one of like the most fun things you can do with a group of friends that's not D. <laughs> Um, thought you were going to say that's not sex. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those fun things you can do that's not sex with your friends. I just thought that's where you were going with the yeah. joke, so D&D really threw me off. And try not to say that to your friends, because there will be a pause where they're like, why did, why did, surely there are other things Wait, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, now this is coming from a guy who just got into Magic the Gathering just like a couple of years ago with a buddy of mine who like did a big Magic the Gathering party, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we've done Commander a couple times at his house since. I always have an awesome time. It's a it's a <clears throat> deeply fun way to hang out with your friends. I know I've never played, but I've only through you talking about how much fun it was. It does. I want to check it out. It seems like a with, fun experience. With, with the caveat that everyone has to be on the same page. Mm. Like we did, we did want the first one we did was. My buddy had um, like we drafted our decks where like you have all these card packs and you can like pick the cards you want. Um, Actually, no, I think he gave us a number of decks and we could combine the decks. doesn't matter. Um, But then someone brought their own deck, which, you know, you're in for a bad time. Yeah. Someone's like, nah, I'm good. I got my own. Yeah. And um, so we played and this guy like it was like turn three and for us a typical game i guess was like maybe 15 30 minutes but it was like turn three and he was like and i win (laughs) and it was like because if you're not super familiar with magic the gathering there are like card interactions that very much like one turn kill so to speak yeah um so he came ready to win uh for the second night that we did it it was a much smaller group and a lot more casual uh and that was that was and they were both really fun, but yeah. anyway. So that's my long spiel about Commander Mode being a really fun format in oh, MTG. Yeah. That checks out. You know, just like D&D, you got to have the right table for it to be fun. So one guy coming in just uh, yeah. smurfing everybody, <laughs> basically. wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe that's right. The, the best time, but yeah, that, that sounds fun. I want to try it. Yeah. Um, well, I guess oh, getting... Or, you, or go ahead. I, I remembered the other thing I was going to yeah. say, which was, I know a couple of you, you know, here at the Pixelist Podcast, we have our technical difficulties left, right, and center. Um, <laughs> we usually tackle them, but then new ones spring up. Uh, but recently, I've had a couple of people say our audio levels have been off again, which is something mm-hmm. we tried to fix in the past. So experimenting with something new this episode, I've tried to turn myself down a bit. So hopefully Blake and I are closer to level, but please always let us know when stuff like that happens so that we can try to fix it. Um, yeah. And I guess like the deeper story around it is I have a, I have a mixer that I use for my microphone and for whatever reason, when I turn it on and off, it just like windows automatically adjusts my volume setting. And for those of you thinking like, Hey, you can turn that off. I've tried. <laughs> I have turned off every setting and it keeps auto adjusting it. 
Um, and you might also be like, well, why not just crank the volume up? Well, because I have also a very particular setting on this mixer for this for my other individual podcast. And so it's just, I don't want to screw anything up. But, you know, like Will said, I think we're in a better place. But that's the, if it wasn't awkward and weird, then I don't know if our, <laughs> if it would be on brand for us. That's right. So, so oh, anyway, we, tr- we tweaked the little things. Hopefully this one's better, but y'all let us know. Um, well, yeah. L- let's, and let me actually pull up before I get too in the weeds on this. Let me actually pull up the episode name, which I think I had. I think it's Fight for the Bloody Bridge. It is. Okay, cool. Um, well, everybody, uh, before we dive in, let me give you a little bit of a spiel on what this is going to look like. We do a little recap before we get into our discussion about the episode. And since episodes can be three, four, even five hours long, we like to do a little recap that boils what happened down to about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then we cut that out as a separate video, post it on the channel a few days after our deep dive discussion, and you can check that out um, to get an idea of what happened. But if you're on that video and you want to see our full thoughts, just click, click the link in the episode description and we'll go from there. So this was episode 114, Fight for the Bloody Bridge. And this basically opens with the party. They just finished their previous combat that Opal was wrapping up. And now they're moving to the heart of the fortress where the Bloody Bridge actually is, where the Malleus Key is. Um, They essentially arrive at this courtyard that's set before the Malleus Key. Um, They can see the Malleus Key. They know... Matt basically reminds them that to save Vax, they first need to get the... um, Oh, man. I keep thinking of Transformers. The cube. uh, The beacon the uh, Luxon beacon out of it, which they don't know exactly where it is in it. Um, And then separately from there, they know they will then be able to get the Vax orb out. However, there are a number of guards around and there's also, um, uh, essentially we come to find out that there is a lair action where the Bloody Bridge is actually summoning down new Ray Lauren and Ruby Vanguard soldiers every round. We have our typical um, plan, you know, planning stage of like, what are we going to do? How do we want to do this? And essentially, the party eventually jumps into combat to assault this bridge. Um, One thing we do in combat is we try not to go through all the details, especially uh, just so you can know this was a five hour plus episode. I think five and a half hours and about five hours of that was combat. Yeah. Um, So just sticking to the high notes. Also, my dog's going crazy, if you can hear that. Everything's okay. Um, But sticking to the high notes, there are a number of thought eaters that are around this area uh, that are guarding the bridge. There's also, I think there were a couple of like little beacon towers where we find out that the weave mind can actually like cast spells through or, or do actions through as well. But one thing that happens early on is we get a, um, uh, oh man, I can't think of what it was. A holy, um, holy constant, not holy concentration, uh, holy something from Liev Tell that gives them, I think it gave them like temporary hit points and then also caused all attacks against them to be at disadvantage. Yeah, it was, I can't remember the name of it, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it was like this level eight spell from our resident cleric, uh, Liev Tell, um, which, Naturally, I mean, this is a party of level 20s, so it's not going to be a fair combat. Um, We also have, uh, as the battle begins, we have a couple of other people who arrive in the battle. One of them is, I think it was Vorak, which was this giant worm, uh, which uh, Bell's Hells had traveled through one of these tunnels on Rudis that was formed by one of these giant worms. So Vorak's here, and it begins the combat against the players. And then also we do have Ozo Kruth, the Sunder King, who arrives on this giant um, alchemically manipulated and experimented on uh, the Dulch, which is known as Scrag. I think Scrag had a number of attacks, like four or five attacks, and also a poison spray. Um, Ozo Kruth himself has a pretty insane attack. Uh, that I think was called like Relentless Fury or like Unrelenting Assault or something to that effect, uh, where essentially he can continue to attack as many times as he wants until he misses three times in a row. 
uh, which we'll come to that a little bit later. Um, Keyleth is going to cast Earthquake on the Malleus Key, and this process actually allows those beacon towers to be destroyed along with much of the other parts of the fortress. Um, and I think, I don't know if this is cutting into your part of the recap, I think we also have Liev Tell who um, does a divine intervention to try to get to that Luxon beacon, um, which it does in fact get exposed. And I think actually Scanlan has a Bigsby's hand that goes in and grabs it. Again, apologize if that's part of your half. I, it's kind of blurring together for me. No, I think that's the end um, of the first half is when they oh, retrieve perfect. it. And then the only other detail that happens in this half is um, Trinket is Pokeballed out and put on the back of Scrag. And then separately, um, Grog actually is swallowed whole by Vorak, uh, but within the stomach of Vorak has like three or four attacks from the inside, does over 100 damage, and is spit out um, from Vorak's stomach. Uh, and I think that's where we go to break, if I'm not missing anything else. Yeah, the uh, the they basically, when um, Scanlan removes the beacon, Ruidus is no longer tethered to the planet. And so, like, the ley lines kind of disperse back to normal, no longer being held in place. And when we pick up uh, the second half, again, it's, like, 90% comment, co comment, combat, uh, so to just hit the high notes again, we have a couple of cool moments here. Um, one, Scanlan casts Dominate Monster on the Vidulch, Scrag, and that is a big swing in the battle. Um, but Ozo Kruth, who is a monster, actually uses that ability Blake was talking about, uh, where he just goes until he misses three times on Vex and basically takes her from full to dead in a in a single round of these attacks and um matt of course asks for vex's last words and last thoughts uh before she dies and uh she thinks of her children a white stone will be in in a good place in their hands and then the last thing she does is like look at percy and say save him referring to vex um percy of course seeing this loses it and goes you know full no mercy percy his next round he's just unleashing all of his attacks all of his bullets both action surges so like it's a supremely long round does a ton of damage but doesn't kill ozokruth by any means and finishes the round by throwing manners his contraption pokeball basically but just completely whiffs so it was a bit of a <clears throat> kind of anticlimactic final moment that made everybody laugh. But um, <clears throat> after that, uh, we do have Pike uh, use her divine intervention to resurrect Vex. So even though she did truly and fully die, uh, she was brought back by the Everlight and uh, then quickly gets on her broom and kind of flies away a bit to safety. Um, other than that, we have uh, after Scanlan had retrieved the uh, beacon, the, the Malleus key starts to crumble. And so Keyleth is looking for Vax within the tower, the Vaxel orb. And she does manage to see it with a high enough perception check. And she flies in there in her air elemental form and basically envelops the orb and rips it from the tower. And after she does this, the orb begins to like shatter and smoke pours out of it that eventually reforms into Vaxeldon. And he immediately rolls initiative and joins this fight and hits a nat 20 on his initiative. So that was a pretty cool moment. Um, <clears throat> other than that, uh, we have Liev Tell use her ninth level spell to cast a mass heal uh, and heal like five or 600 points of health. But the Rylorans, Matt gets to use their fun little feature, which I think it's called Dampen Divinity or something like that. But it basically halves all healing. Uh, so it was still a huge heal, but that one feat took out like 300 worth of healing points for them. Um, after that, uh, we have a really cool moment. We start getting like the different, how do you want to do this is on the different big entities in this fight. And for Ozo Kruth, we have this moment where Grog, Grog walks toward him, humming his own final boss music as he puts it and then rocks up to him and just claps him with three attacks, splitting him in half um and basically using his corpse as a puppet as he describes it with this final blow um and then we have a really cool how do you want to do this on the huge worm uh creature where vex fires an arrow and as a feature of her 
uh, Vestige, Fenthris, a tree sprouts from a creature that she kills. And Zirconos gets to kind of like combo this, how do you want to do this with his own moment. And he like calls lightning down on the worm at the same time. And it like splits through this freshly grown tree. Um, it was really cool. Unfortunately, Liev Tell, I don't think saw him do that. But, uh, you know, <laughs> he and Scanlan were still trying to, you know, wingman. Um <clears throat> But so after that, the, the combat is pretty much over. We still have this dominated Vidolch that Scanlan is controlling, though. Uh, but he basically just has an air bud moment with it and, like, sends it away, like, be gone. Um, so after that, combat pretty much has subsided. And so everyone looks to Vax. And uh, he says, it's been a while. And uh, Vex says, like, you know, how dare you look younger than me? Uh, but Keyleth just quickly asks how long, like, are you going to be here? Like, how long do we have with you? And, um, he's like, I don't know. Like, I want nothing more to stay, but I can't because he like nothing has changed in his perspective. Even with all that's going on with the gods, he's still tethered to the Raven queen. Um, and Keyleth is like, well, what happens if she dies? Like, what's, what does that mean? And he's like, his only response is that I actually don't want that to happen. Like I wouldn't have her go. And Keyleth is obviously kind of like off put by that comment being like, what do you mean? And he goes like, don't get me wrong. Like I want nothing more than to be with you and to be with all of you. But you know, death is a part of life. And just because I wouldn't have her go doesn't mean I don't want to stay. She does a kindness to all of us in our end. Um, but don't mistake me. I long for our life, meaning me and Keyleth. And she just says, well, when will your debt be paid? Um, and as they're kind of talking about this, the surrounding sounds of chaos and battle are kind of getting subdued, and we see that all of these reinforcements have started to arrive. Uh, good guy reinforcements. So we have devils and planetars and wizards and mages and infantrymen all showing up. Um, and one of these, I believe, celestials, but it might have been a devil. Uh, Matt just described it having golden skin, like this very tall, cloaked individual, like looks at Vaxeldon and is like champion where the fight is now in a Silra. We have to go finish this. And he takes off along with a bunch of these other um, people. Uh, so I, it, the presumption there was that he was also potentially a champion of one of the gods. Um, <clears throat> it's at this point that Vax kind of feels a hand on his shoulder and it's the Raven queen. And he has like a whisper in his ear and she says, those that fight to buck fate will march their own path. But in this moment, you choose what's important to you in this fleeting moment. Uh, and then the presence kind of disappears. And uh, it, well, it says, the night is yours. Uh, so Vax basically realizes he has a night before he's going to be called back to his duty, his tether. Um, and so he takes Keyleth's hand and Vex's hand and is like, tell me what I've missed. Tell me about my nieces and nephews. And... Percy says, we'll do you one better than that. Let us go and let us rest. And uh, they then tree stride through the tree that Vex just birthed from the giant worm uh, back to Whitestone. And that's where the episode ends. Again, uh, 114 of Campaign 3, the fight for the bloody bridge. And if you're just on our recap, be sure to check out our full discussion, which will be linked down below. But woo. Great job. Two back to back long episodes. I think they were both five hours plus. Yeah, yeah, so. they were. A lot of combat, too. Big, mm -hmm. big epic, like, big, big, I mean, end of campaign battle just for campaign one, you know? Mm -hmm. So it feels like we're about to get three of those. But yeah, crazy episode. Crazy that it was Vox Machina in one, episode number 114, which was the big. Climactic battle in campaign one. Um, oh, yeah, that works out. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was such a cool like. Just to jump right into it, Matt, like a really cool boss fight with with everything that was going on level tw six or seven level 20 PCs like we've talked about this before. I would get overwhelmed. But like the the fight, even though it was only three or four rounds, because that's how long three or four rounds takes with that many people. I felt like it was very smooth. Like it, it didn't ever feel like, Oh, you know, like, okay, keep it moving. Um, so I was just impressed with how Matt was able to create such a chaotic high level climactic battle, um, that 
even though it was five hours felt like really seamless yeah the scene setting like the everything like there too was really cool um when Scrag first arrived with Ozo Kruth, I was like, uh, and then when Vorak came out, yeah. I was like, ah, I mean, it was just, it was definitely all very cool and a very fun combat, which like you said, level 20 combat is very difficult. Um, I mean, we saw it firsthand of just like, um, all the different like things people have, like yeah. you know, the clerics have the divine interventions, which I, I I was unfamiliar of level 20. I think I said in our watch party, I was like, well, aren't they, don't they need to roll for it? And then someone was like, uh, level 20, it just works. <laughs> yeah. So we had the level 20 divine interventions. We had um, Vex's blessing from uh, the, the Dawnfather. Oh, yeah, or the yeah. Stormlord. Which one was it? Dawnfather. The Dawnfather. Yeah, which was also crazy. I think you could see Matt just like, right, yes. <laughs> I did give you that, didn't I? <laughs> so um, it, it's definitely just nuts, man. It's crazy combat. Yeah. And o Ozo Kruth really like lived up to like being a crazy threat, um, mm -hmm. you know, especially after seeing what Odohan was capable of. And like Ozo Kruth is, you know, even tiers above that. Um, yeah, man, that we talked about it, but that whatever I think, is that something Matt invented? That mm -hmm. that yeah. furious attack or whatever, yeah, that was which so me, cool. Yeah, let me little double check the name of that too. Now that I'm, um, and and speaking of Vex's blessing, like he did like a hundred plus damage to himself because taking mm -hmm. all that radiant like thorns damage or whatever, um, and it basically didn't even <laughs> phase. I mean, it phased him, but like it wasn't even thwarted by it at all um and just yeah like his defensive i can't remember what it was either but like the way he could raise his ac like super high mm -hmm. for the entire round uh he definitely felt like a really cool threat and presence on the battle lived up to the hype of being the sunder king i guess yeah I'm ultimately i thought it was say. for sure i thought he was really cool um i'm just i for some reason i can't frenzied wrath is what it is um, which just a tiny little, you know, rabbit trail here. I'll just say, I mean, this isn't even worth giving time to, but some of y'all need to like dispel getting like overly into the weeds on like mechanics in some episodes like this. I, I remember this happened in calamity a little bit in the, at final combat, but when I was watching it live and then I've seen some chatter also on Reddit since then of like, you know, this thing's so broken. Like, how could Matt create this? Like, this isn't, you know, this would never be fair in a fight. And, you know, some of this conversation, I'm just like, y'all, you got to just, just, just enjoy it, man. Yeah. Just enjoy it for what it is. It's a crazy cool mechanic that this bad guy did against players that are level 20, which, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding of level 20s is that you are basically gods. Yeah. Like, you are, I mean, and there's actually, um, Someone might have to drop it in the comments. There's actually a, from Wizards of the Coast, there is like a description of like, there's like a table that talks about like your level and how you're seen in the world. So like yeah. level 10 is like, you're, you know, known as heroes of the realm. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, and I'm, you think even with that, like level 20, you're like literally like the peak of power. Um, I'll see if I can find it. But, but yeah, very cool homebrew ability. It's you got to have something incredibly powerful like that. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, he almost killed himself with it, with Vex's, you know, thorns ability. Yeah. Um, and I mean, he's the Thunder King. He's got to be able to back that up, you know? Yeah. Again, it's not just one level 20. It's like eight. So, I mean, Matt had to do something to make these formidable foes. So, and I mean, yes, Vex died, but realistically it was going to take a lot worse than that for any of them to really die because they're <laughs> a lot of them have ninth level spells the true resurrection and stuff like so mm -hmm. pike didn't even have to use that divine intervention to to save vex in that moment um so yeah, yeah which, i mean i just thought it was cool and, and how crazy powerful is divine intervention too like you yeah ask for something and it just works you know yeah I think it was even funny, like Liam, 
that little moment where he was yeah. like, not pushing back, yeah. but I did specifically say, bring me the beacon. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there was like another conversation like that later in the session where they were giving Matt a hard time and Matt was like, okay, guy with two level 20s on the board, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, really fun combat. Uh, I loved, you know, Scanlan se- sending air budding Scrag, like yeah. sending him off, you know, which I'm part of me is kind of like, Hey, is that, is that a good thing? Should we, maybe we should have put Scrag down. I don't yeah. know. I mean, he's going to come out of that spell in about 30 seconds and hopefully there's a lot of strong people around <laughs> i mean I don't it's know. one of those things where it's like this beast from rudis has eviscerated an entire village and then they're like "Ooh, it's like that meme of the guy like looking to the side like hmm, someone he, should take care of that yeah so maybe since his um, master's dead he just burrows into the ground and lives his own life yeah Starhead is it po- do you think it's possible to create a level 20 combat that is I don't say compelling because this felt compelling but like is I don't say even like is threatening because it was threatening but like I think about also with um the Mighty Nine reunited when they were fighting um Ukatoa mm-hmm. and Jester had that awesome mass heal as well you know there's just so many resources that a level 20 has that it's it feels like and I've never DM'd a level 20 combat, so yeah. I could be wrong here. It just feels like it's hard to make it adequately threatening, I guess, yeah. if that makes sense. No, I, yeah, I think so. I think you'd have to have like hyper specific, like a hyper specific scenario in place where there's like other kind of stakes. Or like if you're like, if you know exactly what your players have access to, and you know, like, like the, um, I can't remember dampen divinity or whatever. Like you would have to have stuff like that in play in the encounter, I think to like make it actually make sense. But it, I mean, I've never run a level 20 combat either. I couldn't imagine. So it makes me really excited and nervous for the weave mine fight. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know. I, I, I almost feel like Matt might amp it up just a hair. I, I don't think he, <clears throat> I don't think he was merciful. I don't think he like made anything roll over. This felt like, I loved how he did everything in this combat. Yeah. But I almost, I just almost wonder if, you know, you're on the bad guy's home turf. We know the weave mind are insanely powerful yeah. and in, they were Ozo Krut's boss. So like what crazy abilities do they have? Yeah. And there's how many of them? Like five. Yeah. I so think? like in terms of action economy, and I know we had like three or four big heavy hitters in this fight, but like, I'm assuming we have all of the weave mind and probably some mm-hmm. of their guard as well. So like, yeah, it could be, it could be rough. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see the minis too. The yeah. minis for, uh, Scrag and Vorak were both awesome. Like really yeah. cool. Man. Those were really cool. I want mm-hmm. one. Also, I, th- I think a fire alarm is going off, which I'm sure it's fine, but hopefully that's not coming through the mic. I can hear it just a hair. Do you need to? Is it? Do you, is your house on fire? I don't think so. I'll, I'd have somebody rush in here and tell me if if it was. So I'm gonna just mute my mic between when I'm speaking. Yeah, yeah. man's house burns down while while recording a D and D podcast. <laughs> um, there's not a lot to talk about from this episode, but I do want to talk about Vax. Um, I guess starting with Vax. You know, he's been given the night. There was the line from Matt on something to the effect of like, this seems like a gesture of kindness because this could be like the last night of existence like yeah. before everything ends. Um, and it also seems like they are now preparing to send an army through like the back door to attack Rudis directly was the implication that I got from that. Was that similar? I don't, I didn't. Not that it's not that, but I didn't really necessarily connect that. I just felt that like, I mean, I guess they are like, cause why not? But well, um, they're going to a Silra. They're supposed to report to a Silra, right. which is where that. Yeah. Door yeah. Is. Which I guess, I guess that's why, mm-hmm. um, I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah. but yeah, I, that's kind of how I took it. Like, you know, you've served me well, like take the night, especially cause who knows what's happening beyond here. Um, 
which we I talked about this a little bit leading up to this. Just again, again, not that I was like it has to happen only this way, but I was kind of just wondering how this was going to be handled in terms of like, are they going to get to save Vax for good, and like mm-hmm. just how that would how that would work, how that would handle, like would that. I don't know if, how meta we want to get into the conversation, but so now that we know that he can't, nothing has changed at least yet. Um, I think that, well, so have you watched the cool down? No, Mm-mm. they talked a little bit. I know I'm like jumping all over the place here. They talked a little <laughs> bit about this where um, we're, we're basically leaving Vox Machina now when we're going to mighty nine, but Matt said that, like, depending on where the campaign goes, maybe we check back in. But also, like, when the campaign ends, he imagines there will at least be a check back in with, like, major players. Meaning, like, we might get a little bit of a moment with Vox Machina. We might get a little bit of a moment with Mighty Nine. All that being said is that even though, as it stands right now, I think the status quo remains. Vax is not getting saved. He's not coming back. But, like... What happens if the matron flees? What happens if she does die? Like I'm, I still think that possibility is there, but it does seem to be that like we're probably gonna just keep with the status quo, which I'm oh, um, not happy for. But like I don't know how I'd feel if he just did get a happy ending because that was so like meaningful and impactful, you know. So I don't know. How long has it been since like the last time they were together? Like in real life or in world? In in world, uh, yeah, I think it's been almost thirty years since the end of campaign oh. one. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I didn't know if there'd been like any like one shots or anything that like, um, brought them all together. The, yeah, but I think it's there was a wedding one shot, which is like the last time, but that still yeah, was like okay. thirty years ago. Yeah. Um, we've been we've been talking about this in the Discord, and I wanted to ask you about it. <clears throat> um. I, it was painful having not seen C1. It was very painful seeing this. I guess what I envisioned um, was like a reunion of Keyleth and Vax. I, I don't know what I expected, I guess. Yeah. I just kind of expected like finally kind of thing. And um, it, it, it instead it was like you said, like nothing's changed. Like it kind of is what it is. Um in my understanding, I didn't realize this, but like Vax has had like, you know, Ravens that have visited Keyleth to just kind of like, you know, hey, I'm still thinking about you or like, hello. And the chatter we were having in the Discord was like, hey, is this like kind of a, like, should Vax let Keyleth move on? Like, is this a bit unfair to Keyleth? And I, I resonated with that conversation of like, man, I feel, I feel the tragedy of this situation and it does feel deeply unfair to Keyleth. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I think so. I mean, I don't think it's Vax's fault, like, but it's just, you know, she can't ever truly move on. Cause like, you know, had, cause he's back for another day. So like, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, this, it sucks for her. Um, I don't, I don't know how I'd necessarily view, like, I don't think I would personally, and maybe, Maybe I should, but I don't think I would personally put it on Vax in so far as like the Raven coming every day. Like that's him not being able to let go. Because like at the end of campaign one, that was just a line that was like a very poetic, like he's gone, but you know, Keyleth, you do see a Raven every day. And so like, it's not Mm. like it's like Vax in Raven form watching her. To me, it felt more like a, like a, you know, like a token um, but I mean, I do see even potentially the harm in that gesture. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I can't, you, I see you every day, sort of like, um, but so anyway, yeah, I think it's incredibly tragic and incredibly unfair to Keyleth, but I don't think it's a product of like Vax being the one like clinging, but I think yeah. it's just the idea that like, you know, he still exists. He's still out there and <laughs> every 30 years you're getting like a yeah the whole day with them so it's like you can't really move on it's tough because it feels like there's this really fuzzy line between it being romantic and it being cruel yeah and i'm just i'm a big fan of keyleth man especially having watched legend of ox machina um which is a bit ironic because my understanding is that 
Keyleth was, Marisha was um, criticized. There was a lot of just unnecessary fan hate mm-hmm. around um, her character in C1. Uh, abs- well, you're going to make fun of me. Absolutely one of my favorite characters. <laughs> um, but I, I just, I just, I feel for her, man. And I will say, by the way, um, <laughs> again, continuing to say this kind of stuff, uh, Marisha has been one of my favorite actors yeah. in C3. Um, we were talking in the Discord about some of the best moments from her, but um, one of them being when she kills Bordor, another one being when she and Imogen effectively break up, which was just an incredible scene. Uh, but then I put this one up there too, of just like, you could just see, I don't know if bitterness isn't the right word. Like she wasn't like necessarily like angry at Vax, I felt like, but Marisha, you could just see the pain and anger. And I mean, I was just, I was there, man. I yeah. just was like, wow, Marisha, you are fantastic. Yeah. I, yeah. And it makes total sense too, because like you have this and how much more tragic is it that Keyleth lives for like mm-hmm. hundreds of years. So it, like, not that it makes it any less hard to like lose your spouse for lack of a better word. But like if she had a normal lifespan, it would have been like, okay, you know, she lives the next 20 years. He he died first, but no, she lives the next like 300 years and you like, can't ever really move on. Um, and I just, yeah, I thought she played it beautifully, especially like with, and I credit to Liam too, like being true to this, like no longer human really. And like experiences time different and him saying like, I don't want the matron to die. And like how that would ring to Keyleth being like, what do you yeah. mean? Like that's what yeah. <laughs> I am suffering for decades out here. And yeah. you can't even say that like, you know, yeah. uh, and, <laughs> and in the cool down, uh, since you, since you didn't see it, uh, Marisha was like really like devastated, like truly, like she was still like in it. And she was like, mm. I hate this game. Like she didn't, those weren't the words she said, but no, she was like, yeah. how are the, like the emotions are still this strong. Like I'm just so upset and frustrated, um, mm. for Keyleth. And yeah, gosh, totally. I love, I love Marisha dude. Yeah. Like, and I, I just love a player as a DM. I love a player who can just fully, this just really speaks to how incredible these players are it's separate from like voice acting, just like great D and D players, because we've seen them in the last few episodes play three different characters each Yeah, yeah. and how well they put on that persona and take it off. And sometimes that one episode where mighty nine and bell sales, they were literally like cross talking across yeah, characters, yeah. you know, I mean, I think, I think that's just such a compliment to their ability to play. Um, and, and frankly, for those of you who've played home games, it's very difficult, I think, for someone to put themselves, myself included, <clears throat> for someone to put themselves in the mentality of the player they're, they're playing. You know, and I think we see that happen where someone says like, yeah, my character would do this. And they kind of like third person describe yeah. it rather than just like being that character. Living in it, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and the other thing I'll say too about Marisha is the way, like all those emotions you just described, it makes me think of her um, updated character art, which is such, like that portrait of her does also such a good job of evoking kind of like the bitterness or yeah. frustration around how things have gone. Yeah, 100%. Like, it's cool. And it's it's cool to see it, it, full credit to them, but it's also just cool to see that like it does, like they're able to just, get right back into it that quickly and like feel all of that. Um, and I, how do I phrase this? Not that I, not that I don't have anything wrong with, there's nothing wrong with a happy ending. Do not get me wrong, but it's like the power of that emotion and like the yeah. consequences of those actions is poignant. So that's like the only reason I was like, well, if it was just, Oh, Vax is saved now. Like, yay. Like yeah. I don't, and maybe that could be handled in a way that I would think was amazing and beautiful. I'm not saying that's not possible, but that's what I'm really hesitant about. Like if there was this kind of fairy tale ending all of a sudden, um, I get it, you know, and it's, it's yeah. From a story point, like the, the decisions, like the story points lose their meaning when they always head to like, everything's great. Everything worked out. Yeah. Everyone got the happy ending. You know, I think we lose some of the weight of the decisions and like those plot points. Um, having said that, 
Matt Mercer, if you do not bring them back together, I will <laughs> riot. <laughs> so I just, I just think Keyleth has bared the burden. Um, like, I mean, she's the central, she's the one who got the band back together. She's the one who's been overseeing this whole mission yeah. from Bell's Hell since day one. You know, she's, she's worn a lot of the pain and stress and, you know, the burden of all of this that I'm kind of like, you know, can we get our girl a W? Like, yeah. can we, can we get a win in there? So anyway, but we'll see, I guess. She needs it. She needs it. it yeah. It was funny. Cause the, a little bit in the cool down, they were talking about ways they could maybe get Vax back. Like, cause they have true resurrection and they're like, would that work on him? Like, what would that do to him? And mm. you know, Scanlon doesn't have wish anymore, but there's Pike. Pike was talking about, or Ashley about how she maybe was going to use her divine intervention to be like Saren Ray, can you deal with the matron uh, if she hadn't have used it on Vex? Uh, so I don't know. If, <laughs> I want you, you know, to. Yeah. yeah, I want you to kill the the matron. Yeah, like, well, it has to work. So, <laughs> so if we do um, get a little epilogue with them, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they had an idea or at least tried something. But we'll see. I guess it also depends on what actually happens with the gods. Yeah, you know, who knows? Yeah. So confirmation from Matt, we're moving away from Vox Machina. Did they say specifically uh, Mighty Nine or Mighty Nine and Bell's Hells? I think I think it's Mighty Nine next. And yeah, okay. just for the record, who knows if like maybe the first 20 minutes will still be Vox Machina this week. Mm -hmm. But it definitely is the end of it. If not, you know, if we're not already moving to Mighty Nine right at the start. Um, but yeah, I think Mighty Nine would be next, which makes sense. And then you kind of have like the true climax with with Bell's Hells. Um, it's crazy to think like this. We've talked a lot about the end game. We, I mean, one step closer, man. If we get yeah. two episodes with Mighty Nine, if, if it is two, and then like another maybe three or four with Bell's Hells, like this thing could be done in yeah. the next five or six episodes. Yeah, and then maybe maybe like one or two after the like mm -hmm. the Bell's Hells fight. Um, well, I mean. I do think that's where we're at, but you know, as always, I'll throw out the potential of like, depending on what actually happens with this big Pradathos question, maybe there could be room for a little more after, mm -hmm. but we'll I mean, see. there could be, I mean, I don't think this is going to happen, but we've talked about the scenario of like Pradathos freed and like pure chaos and anarchy across Exandria. And yeah. there being like another five or 10 episodes of like a true like climax after that. Um, I also wonder, like, is the did the orb thing? Did that is that just a settled thing, or because it seems like now the it was less, it wouldn't really matter if it got shared or not. Now that the oh, bloody the, bridge battle is over, mm, the, the downfall, downfall movie. Will, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That might be like just an interesting like epilogue plot point of like how that affects people. But yeah, at the very least, it seems too late to impact this final climax. Mm -hmm. uh because the other two battles are presumably can like it's just like it's not armies it's just box mm -hmm. mock or mighty nine and bell's hells pretty much and then lastly was was the bloody bridge was that the bulk of the ruidus force I like are know. they like i would that's assume. what i wonder is are they wiped out now like is i don't know if i, I I don't know if I'd say like wiped out, but I definitely feel like that was the lion's share because that was like the whole intent, right? They don't know about mm. the back door and they Vox Machina and the armies of Exandria are attacking there. So I would assume most of everything was going that way. And then, you know, of course there are going to be guards with the weave mind and with lewdness right. and all that jazz. But yeah, I would assume that the, the main army force has been dealt with. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. Um, well, uh, anything else? No, no. Oh, just one tiny thing. I know, I know we got to wrap it up, but uh, like I mentioned, they were looking for ways to maybe what could they possibly do with Vax? And then <laughs> Scanlan said, well, I could just modify Keyless memory to make him forget about him. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the kindness. I don't know. I um, actually really like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is almost a little doubly tragic too, but yeah, yeah, I like I like that idea a lot, yeah. actually. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of Modify Memory, by the way. I think it's an awesome... Really cool spell. Yeah, just a very cool narrative. 
Um, and you know what's funny is one of, in one of my campaigns, I gave my players an item that basically gives them a free modify memory spell per mm. day. They've never used it. So, <laughs> you know, that's you're a just powerful like, spell. I know. You're just like, okay, well, well I, that didn't that didn't hit like I thought it would. So you tried. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, I think that does it. Um, let us know what y'all thought about the episode. Any theories you have? We'll have our watch party tomorrow night, and we'll. We'll go from there. All right, y'all. Till next time. Bye.